Hey everybody, how's it going? You've probably heard about Kim Jong-un's seclusion for 40 days, and it seems to be part of a larger pattern and maybe even a warning. Let me just show you what I why I say that. You might remember this three-day window we were watching in September, September 1st through the 3rd. It was 40 days after ISIS destroyed Jonah's tomb. And in the story of Jonah, he gives Nineveh a 40-day warning that they're about to be destroyed. Well, apparently, September 3rd was the last day Kim Jong-un was publicly visible. According to NPR right here, he reappeared on October 14th after exactly 40 days in seclusion after he was last seen on September 3rd. And he even missed this 69th anniversary celebration here. So if you count each day that he was in seclusion, starting on September 4th, the day after he was last seen, you have seven days by the 10th, 14 days by the 17th, 21, 28, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, and 40. So exactly 40 days and nights in seclusion ending on Columbus Day. And then he reappeared on October 14th, right after the film mocking his assassination was delayed. So the background on this movie, you've probably heard, it's a comedy about the CIA sending two journalists to North Korea to assassinate Kim Jong-un. And you can see the release date for the film right here on IMDb is Christmas Day 2014. But originally, the release date was October 10th, right here. But the reason the release was postponed was, according to this article from The Hollywood Reporter, Sony decided to alter some scenes in the movie after the North Korean government threatened merciless retaliation against the U.S. if the film is released, calling it an act of war. You probably remember that. But Sony Pictures is a Japanese corporation, so just keep that in mind. I mean, this, this film may be an attempt to provoke the U.S. and China into war. I mean, I hope it's not, but look at what happened the same weekend the Kim Jong film was postponed. A U.S. Marine was charged for murder in the Philippines. So this is the breaking story right here on October 12th. Marine detained in Filipinos killing. It says this occurred on Saturday night, which was October 11th. And there's outrage in the Philippines right now over this. The protests have been going on for over a week with some people burning the American flag and yelling for the U.S. troops to get out. So apparently the U.S. were conducting military exercises with the Philippines. And then when they were on break that Saturday night, this kid asked the U.S. Marine to come with him. And a few minutes later, the Marine left and the kid was found dead sometime after that. Well, now they're screaming the U.S. Marine murdered him, but this may have been perpetrated by Chinese advocates. It says in this ABC News article, advocates are calling for the abolition of the Visiting Forces Agreement. The murder case emerged as security ties were blossoming between the United States and the Philippines. The longtime military allies signed a new accord in April, and both countries have been vocal critics of China's territorial claims in the South China Sea. So this incident right here may have been not a murder in the heat of anger, but possibly an assassination by Chinese advocates as an act of war against the U.S. in that territory. So I don't know if you've noticed this dance that has been going on between the U.S. and Chinese militaries. China encircling U.S. waters because they say the U.S. is encircling their waters. Well, apparently the U.S. and Chinese waters is what the Obama administration calls the pivot to the Pacific or the pivot to East Asia. This article says right here it represents a significant shift in American foreign policy from the Middle Eastern European focus to an East or South Asian focus. 
So whatever is going on here, I mean, China over here and the US over here, I don't know the full scope of that. But this incident that's happening right now in the Philippines, I don't think that's a coincidence. And the reason is there are all these other events that seem to be happening surrounding this event. For example, that dream I had in 2012 that came true, and part of it was about a Filipino moon. Remember that? I uploaded this dream to YouTube on May 4th, 2012. It's in the playlist, Proof the Visions Come True. And most of the dream was about a plane crashing into a building, and in the dream, I was a woman with a couple of children standing on a hill and and this plane flew over me and crashed into a building. Well, then on June 3rd, 2012, this plane crashed into a building in Nigeria and this woman with children witnessed the whole thing. She said it flew over her head. So I know this was specifically what I saw in the dream a month before because the landscape even looks the same, this hill right here. So um, it seems like I actually saw this event from this woman's perspective a month before it happened. And I know that is so weird, but the proof is there uh, on YouTube. It's, it's still there. I, I did dream it and it did happen a month later. But the larger point I'm trying to make here is that at the end of this dream, at the end of this dream that has already been proven to have come true, at the end of that, a security guard in a subway station was telling me something that seemed important, but all I could remember afterward were the words Filipino moon. And this was before I knew that Ban Ki-moon is the eighth secretary general of the UN, and we know the UN is the beast. And actually, he turned 70 years old on our June watch date which is another bizarre coincidence that I'm not going to go into right now. But notice this Filipino murder occurred just a couple of days after the lunar eclipse that occurred on the first day of standard Sukkot and a week, a couple of weeks before this solar eclipse that occurs on true trumpets. So this Philippines event uh, may have something to do with my dream in 2012 about the Filipino moon. So because it occurs right after this lunar eclipse, and we know this lunar eclipse right here was no ordinary lunar eclipse because it happened on the first day of standard Sukkot, and it's part of a tetrad occurring on the biblical feast days in 2014 and 2015 that is really rare, and I'm sure we all know about that. But what some people don't realize is that the lunar eclipse that just happened also coincided with the draconid meteor shower this year, which was part of the Revelation 12 sign that occurred in 2012. So that meteor shower from the dragon constellation was on the first day of Sukkot. And on the seventh day of Sukkot, the leader of the dragon country reappeared after 40 days in seclusion the same week the Filipino people are protesting against the U.S. Combine that with the fact that the Empress of China in San Francisco is planning to close at the end of the year. We talked about this before. The Empress of China was the name of the first trade ship from the U.S. to China. So that closure may represent the closing of U.S. trade with China in December 2014 when the Kim Jong film is due to release. But here's the other weird thing about this 40 days seclusion. Notice he went into seclusion immediately after the end of the 40 days from the destruction of the tomb of Jonah, which also occurred after the June, 40 days after the June watch date. So that destruction of the tomb, of Jonah's tomb, occurred at the end of Noah's 40 days of rain. And Noah's 40 days on the true calendar started on our June watch date right here, which ended up being the exact date of the ISIS massacre. So there were actually three 40-day periods this season ending on major events. The 40 days of Noah's reign, starting here on the true 17th day of the true second month. If you want to know about the, the true calendar, check the links below. I think it's called um, 
ancient calendar appointed times or something like that explains how it works. It's, it's r- biblical. It's right out of the Bible. But the, the true 40 days of Noah's reign started right here and ended here when Isis destroyed the tomb of Jonah. And in the story of Jonah, there are also 40 days. So when we add 40 days to this destruction of Jonah's tomb, we end up here. And then immediately after the 40 days of Jonah, Kim Jong went into seclusion for another 40 days, ending here. So again, there were three 40-day periods starting from that June watch date. First, Noah's 40 days then Jonah's 40 days, followed by um, this 40 days that Kim Jong was in seclusion. Well, the other, another 40 day period in the Bible is the 40 days of Moses, when Moses is on the mountain of, mountain of God. And in that story, there are actually two 40 day periods back to back. So if Kim Jong's 40 days represents the story of Moses, then there will be another 40 days after this ending Thanksgiving week. And we'll talk about that more later. But this emergence of Kim Jong-un after that 40-day seclusion, right in alignment with the two 40-day periods before it, that may be telling us something. And also in the story of Noah, there are 14 days after a 40-day period. And 14 days after Kim Jong-un came out of his seclusion, lands on our next high watch period the 26th through the 29th. And that's based on the warnings that we've been given for the past three years, the fulfillments of this vision that I saw in 2011. I So I saw this vision and I uploaded it on October 13th, 2011. In the vision, I saw four things, a power outage, a hurricane, what looked like a volcano, and a circle with a line through it. Well, the power outage happened two weeks later on October 29th, 2011. The hurricane hit New York City on the same date the following year, October 29th, 2012. And the volcano seems to have referred to the Sicily Island volcano that erupted on the true seventh day of Sukkot in 2013. That was actually the 26th. Um, And the circle with the line through it is the Danish word for island. So that seemed to fit, although there was a European storm on the 28th and two X-class solar flares on the 28th and 29th, which as odd as it may seem, we see X-class flares on our watch dates a lot and they don't really happen that often. But even if you ignore the X-class flares, this vision right here was fulfilled three years in a row on roughly the same dates. And there are two other visions that were also fulfilled three years in a row on roughly the same date. So three visions fulfilled three years in a row. This vision here that keeps being fulfilled around September 16th through the 18th. This one here that highlights October 26th through the 29th. And this one that seems to be warning about Christmas Eve. And I just noticed something else about this. If the pattern continues this year, it will be a total of 12 fulfillments with Christmas being the 12th. So in the past three years, the patterns we've noticed seem to indicate that whatever happens in either the September watch period or the October watch period will indicate where the event will happen on Christmas. So... The fact that this watch is happening 14 days after Kim Jong came out of his seclusion and that 40-day seclusion seems related to the postponing of that film, which is due to release on Christmas Day, which is the final watch this season, that may indicate something. I'm not trying to freak anyone out. I mean, we know these watch, these dates, um, these watch dates significant things keep occurring on them. Um, and so I, I do I do believe it's a warning about something bigger. Um, and the good news is that Christmas this year lands on true Shavuot in the Southern Hemisphere, which 
represents the wheat harvest or the escape of the bride. So that's the good news. I'm out of time for this video right here, but please stay tuned for the next video because there's so much more having to do with this. I'll, I'll leave the link below.